Hello everyone, this is Sasha from Virtual Performance Tour. I'd like to welcome you to this uh, new episode. We're going to discuss the new VPT 1.00 Wet & Balance engine. The Wet & Balance uh, module is quite a large one, so I decided to split it into two videos. The first one, we're going to talk about the raw Wet & Balance system, and the second video will cover the Virtual Dispatcher. In today's program, we're going to have a view of the pre-VPT 1.00 layout and compare it to the new one. We are going to look at the wet and balance manual and we're obviously we're going to do some demonstrations uh, with the setup, the packs and the automation, the wet and balance textual and graphical results, the cargo and the load optimization. We'll have a look at the adjust pair tab and the new ML system. And finally, we're going to finish with the fuel and a big surprise there. Uh, and I'm going to discuss quickly of what's coming up next uh, in the next videos. So what's new with uh, VPT 1.00? So it's a 100% new wet and balance engine. It has some uh, clean code in there. It's therefore easier to maintain for us. And this new engine allows to develop more features to you. Uh, this is why we have created obviously some very advanced features, new documents, uh, new LMC feature, and much more. So let's start with the VPT 0.99 layout. So this is the VPT 0.99, as you can uh, see and most probably familiar with. Uh, we have the uh, tab selection on the top, the reset button. You can navigate it through different uh, pages by clicking to the appropriate tab. You have a textual result here and we have the graphical result below. The setup feature all the settings you can ad to adjust your empty weight to get your operating at empty weight or dry operating weight. You can load up obviously some passenger. As you can see here, the virtual dispatcher button is right here. Uh, the cargo is pretty much straightforward to have the address page and finding the fuel with some notes on the current profile. Now let's move on to VPT 1.00. So this is VPT 1.00 wet and balance. As you can see here on top, we have a new wet and balance manual. We're going to have a look at uh, this one uh, very soon. The button up there have been reworked. You have to now add access to the virtual dispatcher at any time from any pages. The reset button is clear, it's in red. You have way more options right here. And as you can see, we have the actual result below and the graphical results on the right side. And now let's talk about the wet and balance manual. To access the manual, just press on the info button next to the title. And there is the full manual. As you can see, it's pretty extended. It covers a lot of topics. I'm going to go through them in a second. So I'm gonna, you have a, a word of the theory of the wet and balance. Yeah, you have notes on the calculation. So how we perform the calculation, uh, which is uh, according to the ATPL books. Uh, which is quite different from the way Flight Simulator tends to calculate the uh, weight and balance, which is sometimes problematic uh, for some profiles, uh, but we try to make it work anyway. So how to use the virtual performance uh, weight and balance? You can have a note on the virtual dispatcher, some definition, obviously, to understand all the terminology of uh, the weight and balance, some standard masses, and a specific gravity uh, of fuel. So this is quite a summary of the weight and balance. And if you go slightly below, you have access to the FAA Aircraft Weight and Balance Handbook, which is about 100 pages long and covers the weight and balance in much more details. Let's go with the demonstration and with it, let's talk about the setup page. So here's the setup. An aircraft is empty. This is the empty weight and we're going to configure it for the flight. Basically, we're going to add the fly crew, the cabin crew, the catering, portable water, if there any duty free and then configure the other settings like the standard packs weight and so on and so on. 
By selecting any item here, we're going to actually calculate the, empty, the operating empty weight, as you can see here. So let's have a look uh, from top to bottom on all the settings available. First of all is the placard weight right here. Uh, this is by default to the maximum structural, structural takeoff weight, uh, but it could be uh, different in case of you use the flexible takeoff weight system. On the right side, you have access to the list of profiles. At the moment, we are in the pre-release uh, status, so we have only one profile uh, available. And we're going to release all the profiles to the testers, and once they are approved, you, you have a full uh, list of profile available on the official um, release date of VPT 1.00. Uh, next to the profile, you have a small button called details. If you press on it, you have uh, information about this profile. So you have the title, the full title of this profile, a uh, short description, and as you, as you can see here, some restriction. So basically, this profile is not to be uh, meant to be used for flight simulation, uh, but rather as a feature demonstration like we do today. So here's the empty weight. It's a fixed uh, value. Uh, read the profile. And basically, the empty weight, once you configure your aircraft with the seating, it has a center of gravity position. Here it's located at 19.1% Mach. For the flight crew, you can actually select how many flight crew you have on board. The default uh, value on the 737 is two crew, uh, cockpit crew. You can have access to some other information here, like the flight crew standard weight, notes on different operations, and so on and so on. Um, next to it, we have a new button called Crew. And this is quite a neat feature. You have access to the list of uh, your crew today. So here's myself on the first line as a captain because I'm configured as well in the system. And I have a first officer, Tyler. We have uh, the purser, Catherine, uh, and uh, the rest of the crew, Darren, Anna, and Jody. So those are randomly generated, but it goes a bit further into details. If you have selected a, a home base, then the names, the first and last names will actually um, be related to the place of your base. So if you're based in Italy, you have a lot of Italian names. If you're based in uh, England, you have a lot of English names and so on and so on. So all this is uh, obviously configurable in the fleet app. For next with the cabin crew, I see by default it's pre-selected to four cabin crew. That's the standard uh, number and on the 737-800. If you start to move around, let's say we go five cabin crew. As you can see here, the weight changes, center of gravity changes. But what happens if you go to lower than standard uh, cabin crew? It goes to amber, because now we, you have a problem. So let's have a look here on the small info button. So the fly crew, uh, the cabin crew is on the weight. Oh, there's a small mistake right here that will be fixed, obviously. Uh, it's 75 kilos. This is the... Um, load um, distribution on the stand we have two in the front two uh, in the aft galley and whenever you have less cabin crew uh, than the standard operating uh, requirement here's a note and in order to dispatch with less than uh, the standard oper operation uh, cabin crew number I'm not going to go into too much details, but basically what's the logic behind is uh, one cabin crew member is responsible for um, a group of 50 passengers. So you have a lot of consideration in order, in order to dispatch with less than uh, four cabin crew in this case. Again, if you press on the crew, it shows you again all the cabin crew um, available. The name it changed. And this is because we have actually selected 
a different number of uh, cabin crew. So every time you select a different number of fly crew and cabin crew, the list will uh, be updated with new names. As you can see here, we have uh, three cockpit crew. We have actually two captain. In this scenario, it could be actually a, um, a line training captain doing a line check on uh, both myself and uh, Mary, the first officer. And as you can see at the back, we have more, uh, six cabin crews as we selected. Let's revert it to standard. Catering. This is a pre they are pretty much standard option like we had before. Uh, you have a bit of more information uh, in here. So you have the package name uh, and the description. Uh, of all of them and then you have the arm and reference datum for each station so as you can see uh, if you have some weight in the forward galley you have the position there it's at 120 inches from the reference datum uh, and so on and so on for the aft galley the portable water uh, next is the duty free so you can actually load some duty free that's extra catering for some uh, usually it's from some special destination or intercontinental uh, flight you might have some duty free loaded. As you can see, any selection right here has an impact on the center of gravity. Uh, next is the portable water. Uh, not a lot of operators have this option uh, enabled, but you have it here as a demonstration purposes. Um, you can actually correct your CG uh, based on the portable water level. Uh, the portable water in the 737 is located at the back, rear the aft doors. And so if you have less water in there, your CG will move forward. As you can see now, we have 18.3, we have uh, go half tank, we have 17.7, so the CG moves forward. I mean, most airlines, they just keep... Uh, the standards are more conservative, 100% weight. And below we have a new feature. Uh, it's called Pax Weight and Back Weight. So now yeah, you are able to actually change the, your standard weight. So as you can see here, the standard is 84 kilos per passenger or 185 pounds. But you also have the option to go with the holiday charter, which is an official number of 76 kilos or 168 uh, pounds. And you know, so for cargo flights, you have another value, but the cargo option is not available yet. And more detailed information is available here. Uh, you have the standard mass values for the passenger flights. So as you can see, so those are all ICAO standard values. Uh, I know sometimes SimBrief makes things up or makes things a bit differently, but those are the standard values. So you may actually correct your SimBrief profile to match this. Uh, but there we go, so for 20 passengers or more, we have uh, an option to differentiate male and female, but we use actually the 30 passenger and more aircraft with all adults weight, uh, with 84 kilos, 76 for the holiday charter, children are standard uh, to 35 kilos, and there's no weight for the infant, which is like from zero to two years. And accordingly, you have some masses for the baggages. You have some domestic flight option, which is like 11 kilos per bag, within the European region, which is 13, intercontinental, which is 23, and all other is 13 kilos. As you can see, you have some notes to do, actually explain what does a domestic flight means. So that would be more like in a quite a big country like the United States, uh, Australia, and so on, China. Uh, you have the flight within the European region. This is explained right here. So this is the European region as, um, as stated by the ICAO. And obviously a note on the inter intercontinental flights. And for the cargo flight, you have also a note here, but we're not going to uh, discuss this uh, today. So as, as you can see here, the setup is really quite uh, detailed. 
It has some more information read the profile, but also more safety feature like the cabin crew uh, shortage. Uh, the new feature of the crew names. Catering is pretty much standard. The inf extra information has been improved. Uh, the potable water, I'm not sure if it's uh, all brand new, but at I know it has been at least improved here. And this is brand new where you can actually select your packs and bag weight. So this is a real setup tab. Uh, let's move to the packs. So the passengers, the logic remains the same as the previous version for the uh, to add passengers. You have first to add the number of passengers. So let's say we have uh, 150 adults. Let's say we have uh, five child and two infant on board. Those are the supernumeraries or like company staff traveling with you. So they are, have a special category, but they are included just as um, the adults. So as you can see, we have actually a total of 157 passenger uh, to be loaded. You can use the old fashioned way. So let's say we're gonna, gonna try to add and guess. Let's put something like 100 here, 25 in front, 25 in the back. And we're actually missing uh, five child. Let's put it here, 105. So as you can see, this is a lot of guessing and see how we can actually remain within limit. Uh, but actually, there's an easier way. It's actually using this new auto load feature. When you press there, it actually spread the passenger among all the cabin. Uh, I haven't done a quite good job, actually. It's only in 23, 109, 23. So it's quite close to what I had before. But this, it's much easier, as you can see. This You are less prone to mistake and it's much faster. A small note here, as you can see, we have a total seated passenger of 155, where the total passenger are at 157. This is because we have actually two infants on board. And the infant do, uh, do not occupy a passenger seat. They are sitting on the laps of the parent. And so this is correctly reflected in the system. And, and this is what this note actually is uh, all about. So not including the total passenger, uh, total seated passenger, but they are included in, in the weight, uh, which is zero, as you can see. So you have a to total seated passenger, you have the total weight, Let's uh, have a look here on the demonstration of the results. So as you can see here, if I'm removing some passenger, we have a lot of warning coming up. First of all, we, as you can see, the total seated passenger are incorrect. So we have only a 132, where we expect to actually have a 157 passengers, so 155 seated. That's the expected value right here. So it's amber. As you can see here with the textual uh, uh, result, the takeoff and taxi weight are in amber. And that actually means that they're, uh, they are out of limit. And as you can see here graphically, the takeoff and the taxi envelope is the white one. And we have an extended envelope for the maximum zero fuel weight and the maximum landing weight. So those, those ones are in actually in white, where the takeoff and uh, taxi are in amber. See here, we have um, also a lot of new information to gr just to grab your attention in case of error. First of all, the graphic is dashed in red. There's also a light red over, overlay right here, which is there actually just to grab your attention to correct your weight and balance. And the new feature here is also the corrective action. There's actually some notes. It's kind of Airbus style or Boeing ACA style. You have a warning here. The weight and balance is out of flight envelope. Why is that? Then you have the explanation in Amber. CG is out of the flight envelope. Okay, that makes sense. It's right there for the, it's outside the takeoff, uh, takeoff range. And you have a corrective action explained here. It says move weight forward. 
In this case, there's more to it because we are missing some passenger. So if we correct it, right here, let's put 23. We have actually moved some passenger in the forward section and we have corrected at the same time the load and the passenger numbers. All right, let's move to the cargo page. The main, the fundamentals of the cargo is pretty much the same. So you have all the holds available and you actually can enter some weights in there. So let's put a 2000 kilo here. As you can see, now we are again out of the flight envelope. So it's not, it's quite hard to actually guess uh, your load distribution right. So let's say now I'm going to go 1,700 and 300 in the whole tree. That looks like, like it works. But we have a CG of 12.9%, which is quite forward and very inefficient. So now you can actually go the other way around to try to find out the most optimal CG. Let's say we're going to put 2000 kilo in the back. That works. It's quite a half CG. That's kind of, that works. It's quite nice. But let's say now we have 2500 kilos or 2000. Let's go now just to 3000 kilos. And you end up again in the other side of the flight envelope. So I have created a new feature in this page to actually optimize your load distribution. If you press on the total cargo right here, it will change to actually, let's put here 3000. This will change to manual input. So now we have 3000 kilos waiting to be loaded. And how are we going to load this uh, cargo? So we have a bunch of options right here. And let's start with the first one, the optimum one. So this will actually create a uh, load the uh, cargo in a way to have a, uh, around two thirds of the flight envelope. This will actually be considered as quite optimum loading. It's not too aft to be close to the limit. It's, not, uh, it's aft enough to save fuel. And it's quite a nice balance overall. So let's go and press to load. As you can see, the system has loaded 2,184 kilos in the back and uh, 816 kilos in the uh, hole two. And that gives us a two-thirds CG right here on the takeoff envelope. This feature actually right here, actually, it has been improved. And if you press there, you have a nice view of the flight envelope right here. And as you can see, that's really about two thirds of the flight envelope. That is a pretty cool feature. But now let's say you have some other logic or other company procedures. Let's say we're going to have used the procedure of a very famous Irish low cost airline, which wants to put everything in the forward holds as much as possible. It's going to let's go with the selecting forward hold two and reload those 3000 kilos. So everything has been um, loaded in the hold two, except anything that, that will uh, bring you out of the balance. So actually I have implemented like a, uh, 1% safety margin on the side of the each side of the envelope. And so it has been loading as much of cargo as possible in the forward hole too, uh, to stay within the safety margin. Unfortunately, 3000 kilos is a lot. So it has to put, um, so the system had to put some weights in the whole tree. We can actually use the same procedure in reverse where we can actually go with the, everything in whole tree. As you can see, everything has been loaded in the whole, whole tree. But loading the 3000 kilo will bring us out of balance. So we have a bit of cargo in uh, the forward hole too as well. Now you can also play even smarter. Um, yeah, before that one, we're going to just have a uh, demonstration on this uh, option. This one is not very realistic, but it actually loads a bit of uh, a bit of cargo in a whole, all the holds available. And that will bring you pretty much a standard centered uh, CG. I don't see any real use, any operational use to that, but it's available if you, in case you need it. 
Now we can also actually have a target CG. And it's quite, uh, it's quite an interesting one because you can actually select the target CG you actually want to, uh, to have. So let's say we're going to have a 20% C target. And let's go load it. And as you can see right here, I'm going to put this in bigger. We have actually a 20% CG here. This applies to the zero fuel weight and the takeoff weight uh, will obviously vary with the fuel on board. Uh, this uh, system works quite nicely and has a precision of 0.1%. Now all the new CG you have entered are available in the lists. You can actually clear them if you want. Or next time you will reload VPT, all those will be clear automatically. Let's move on to the adjust page. So this one is not used very often. Uh, it allows you to actually implement manual change to the weight and balance system. That means you actually can add weights at certain arm position or actually remove some weight. If you ask for some example, I have uh, two in mind. The first one, if you have a non-standard catering, you say you have some extra uh, boxes of duty-free or less box than duty-free, you, you can actually adjust those values. Uh, the company will usually um, give you the arm for those uh, for the position of the duty-free. Uh, but if you want to, we have a, you have access to all the station right here. So let's say if you have a bit of uh, extra. Uh, extra boxes on duty free in the aft galley. You can actually use this position. As you can see, by, pre -sel by selecting the use button, it has automatically selected the text and the arm. Now, let's say we have just two boxes of 20 kilos, and voila, weight and balance has been adjusted for this change. Another use of this page is in case of uh, uh, some center tank MEL. So let's have a look here on the 737 MEL for the center fuel tank. Uh, this one is a very interesting one. So in the fuel section right here, we have this item fuel boost pump center tank. And let's assume they are both in up. So number installed, installed two. You have two center tanks uh, pump. Number required for dispatch zero. So in that case is quite very it's quite interesting. So if you have one pump working, you can all still use the fuel in that tank. But if the tank, uh, if both fuel boost pumps are inoperative and you have some uh, some fuel in the tank, then it gets problematic. So let's have a look here. The two may be inoperative provided center tank quantity indication operates normally and center tank remains empty or zero fuel weight calculation are adjusted by the weight uh, of the center tank fuel. So this is actually the B that we are very interested in. So the B says that uh, you actually can convert the fuel in the center tank into a uh, weight, into a mass. But there's absolutely no information anywhere on how to do that. So in real, you will have to call your operation and ask for the uh, associated arm for that uh, amount of fuel in the tank. So the more fuel you put, the more fault your CG goes and the arm changes due to the shape of the fuel tank. So there's really no, uh, no way to actually guess the, the position of, of the fuel but thankfully, I have added this new feature, which is called Center Tank MEL. You have a bunch of notes here, again, explaining how it works, when to use it. Uh, but like I said here, we have given you an example with the fuel uh, boost pump, the Center Tank in op. We're going to select the Center Tank. On the 737, it's quite uh, straightforward. There's only one Center Tank. Let's say we have two tons of fuel uh, remaining. And as you can see here, the arm is automatically calculated as 
every time you change the value, it's, it is automatically calculated and easily available to uh, enter and use it sh straight away. So by going, going to the center tank ML, we have set the amount of fuel that is trapped in the center tank. We, uh, that gives us an uh, arm, um, uh, arm moment that we actually enter automatically by with this button into the system. And so now those two tons are included into the zero fuel weight. And the position has been obviously also corrected right here. So yeah, I hope you like this uh, new cool feature. Well, I know you might probably never use it or maybe once to try it, but still I find it was quite interesting to have it. Especially this is not a feature that is available to us in, uh, in real. So we are really dependent on the operation uh, for, yeah, for some good reason, obviously, for some uh, safety re reason to avoid to mess up too much with the arm. Uh, but it's, I think it's quite a cool feature for you as a virtual uh, pilot. So let's move on to the fuel. The fuel pages remain pretty much the same. Uh, you have your fuel distribution, the plan trip, taxi fuel. I've I added a bit of separation right here just to make things a bit uh, clear. And how we usually d use it is by entering the total fuel straight right here. I have added so uh, 7,800 kilos of fuel. That's basically uh, the full main tank. And as you can see here, we have a small warning message. It says landing weight above maximum. Of course, we have added some fuel, but now we said to the system that the plant trip fuel is actually zero. So we expect to land with that same amount of uh, fuel. So that is uh, not correct and above the maximum stru structural uh, landing uh, weight. So I'm going to add some uh, trip fuel. Let's say here, let's go with 3,500 kilos and about 195 for the taxi fuel. And now everything is back to normal. As you can see here, so this is the takeoff CG. This is the landing weight, uh, the landing CG, and this is the zero fuel weight CG. Uh, the drawing of the line has uh, improved by a lot, which uh, way more details uh, than before. And as you can see, the more fuel you add in the wing, the half your CG goes. So if you make a, another example with 15 tons, again, the trip fuel is too uh, small, as you can see here, landing weight above max, trip fuel verify or reduce your block fuel. Uh, let's say we're going to fly for a quite long trip. Uh, let's go with the 11 tons of uh, planned trip fuel. And as you can see here, the CG moves forward at 18.7. And actually, uh, in cruise, when you burn the fuel, the CG will move back forward. This is the point where actually we've, we burn all the center tank fuel. And from this position to the landing weight, this is where we're going to burn the, uh, the main tank fuel in the wing. This is the expected landing weight. If we have to divert, then we're going to be using this, uh, the reserve fuel. Uh, and the CG will actually move forward up to uh, ultimately re reaching the zero fuel weight if you land without any fuel. And before we move on to the surprise, I would like to share some news with you. We have signed a partnership with a flight dispatcher school who will be using VPT in their course. Here's a short commercial to know more about Just a Flight Dispatch School. Located in Milano, Malpensa, Italy, Just a Flight Dispatch School offers highly professional courses that provide you with the knowledge and skills needed to become a successful flight dispatcher. Thanks to their team of certified instructors and the following the ACAO regulation, Just a Flight Dispatch School will prepare you to embark on the exciting career as a flight dispatcher. Among all the subjects that will be covered during the training, aircraft mass and balance and performance are one of the most important courses to become a flight dispatcher. This is why Just a Flight Dispatch School has chosen us at Virtual Performance Tool to give you the best performance tool for your training. 
Milano is a truly beautiful city, but you don't even need to move there as the course is held entirely online. Your instructors will follow your progress and help you throughout the three months training, after which you will receive your double certification for EASA and the FAA. What a quick way to fulfill your dream job in aviation. And that's not even the best part. Thanks to our partnership with the Adjuster Fly Dispatch School, you are entitled to an amazing discount. Use VPT10 to get a 10% discount on the course. Requirements and conditions apply. Visit Jester.school for more information. And now let's talk about the surprise. So as you may have noticed, there's a new button right there. It's called Fury Sip, and this is a new feature, which is part of the new flat documentation feature of VPT 1.00. By pressing there, you open this new window when you have a few fields to fill. Uh, the first one is a fueling tank, which is basically the fuel you already have prior to fuel fueling. So in case of you return or you just made a flight, you land, let's say, with 3,500 kilos. And now you need 15,000 kilo for the new flight. You can select the layout. We have actually two layouts implemented at the moment, or just select the random or the one you actually want to. Uh, in real, um, each airport has their own layout, so it's going to be difficult to implement them all, as the list will be uh, pretty much endless. However, the idea behind the layout is to give you a different format, just to get you a bit closer to uh, the real operation. And sometimes some formats are less um, user-friendly than the other, so that the random selection could actually re re replicate uh, this uh, feeling of real operation. I'll, I like the, the long receipt very much. It's, it's a very nice one, very clear, uh, very nice uh, receipt to work with, uh, especially if you're new to this. So I've generated the new receipt by pressing the generate button. As you can see, this is your fuel receipt. You have a lot of uh, information. We're going to have a look on all of those. As you can see here on my pointer, there's a pen. And as you might have guessed, we have actually, you can actually write on the receipt, uh, erase what you just wrote, change the color of the pen, use the, the black one. All those uh, unnecessary features, but that make it quite cool, I believe. Uh, I like the blue one, it gets a bit more. Um, uh, contrast with the black text, the black printed text. So let's see here. So we have a logo right here. So this is the VPT logo. We have the airport name E here, this is uh, national. So this is the airport I have selected for the purpose of uh, this demonstration. Uh, this is the refueling service. We have a delivery ticket, which is uh, uh, dated today, 23rd of uh, September, 23. Uh, we have a random generated uh, number of the receipt. We have a customer and part of uh, a fake virtual airline called VPT Airlines. And so this is the customer that will be paying um, for the receipt. And the default value might be something like... Uh, actually, I forgot, uh, actually, I forgot what the default value is. Um, but it is, it's either something like virtual performance tool or maybe your name. Um, supplier. So we have another company called VPT Aviation Fuel that will follow you all around the, uh, the globe and will give you the, uh, the fuel to your aircraft and give you those amazing uh, fuel receipt. Uh, we have the, the airport. So this is, this is uh, Brussels. We are, have requesting a service which is uh, refueling. What type of product is uh, Jet A1 for this uh, type of aircraft? We are flying to Fiumicino, Roma in Italy. Our flight type is uh, uh, that's IFR commercial. Uh, I forgot to actually enter a registration, otherwise it will be selected here, and you have the aircraft type. Now, this is where it gets a bit more technical. So the fuel started here at, uh, I believe, uh, local time. Yeah, it's, uh, I think, always local time here. Uh, it has ended at 1907. That was uh, about five minutes ago, uh, which is actually realistic because it's the fuel stopped. 
so this uh, we print the, uh, the fuel receipt and somebody will bring he, the fuel receipt to the aircraft and uh, that would take a bit of a few minutes to to get the paper in uh, it started at uh, 1852 so we had about 15 minutes uh, of uh, fueling that's quite a lot but remember we have requested quite a lot of fuel as well uh, the fuel temperature has been set to 15 degrees uh, this is the standard one if you select uh, something in uh, the takeoff dispatch uh, something lower then actually the, the temp fuel temperature will be changed now if you, in this case I don't have anything selected in the takeoff dispatch uh, so the standard 15 degrees uh, Celsius is used but if I would have selected something else this will be uh, adapted with the temperature we're going to actually uh, calculate the density of the fuel uh, the fuel flow uh, that's about actually a real value it depends on the fuel truck it's a new old uh, for the 737 about 900 liters per minute is very realistic and those this rate will actually give you the timing here this is the meter um, so this is basically a meter on the fuel truck and it has been uh, when the fueling started it has been at uh, the first value and this is actually expressed in liters and each liter you consume is actually increasing the meter and until the fueling is complete and the difference between the two makes you actually the, the total quantity uh, of fuel in liters we always get the fuel figures in liters in Europe uh, and this is where actually the fuel check is very important because now you have to actually compare what, what you what you have on your instrument is makes sense uh, with the fuel receipts that is that we had actually 3500 kilos in the tank at first so actually the fuel that we have received should be around uh, 11,500 kilos if I'm not mistaken which uh, if you multiply 0 0.8 by 14,217 which pretty much give you that figures finally a bit of uh, notes the signature of the fielder and then you actually can sign the fuel receipt and download it so now this is an uh, image that you can actually store um, in your flight envelope if you want to and so on and so on that's it guys uh, thank you for watching subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of those uh, previews and until next video i wish you a very pleasant day and happy landings